Throughout my time in law enforcement, I worked in prisons and I worked in the streets patrol officer. And as a patrolman, I would get out my vehicle and just to go speak to people and they always have that look on the face like, what did I do? I was just, before I got close enough to someone, like, hey, I just want to talk. You know, and it was always me trying to figure out what is it that I can do. Sandy Powell, welcome to the round table. Uh, my topic for today uh, is one that I think never gets old, and uh, it's because it doesn't seem to solve itself. It doesn't seem to uh, get to a place where we see it where it's supposed to go. And that is good communication or good relationship between the community and law enforcement. And so today I have with me uh, my guest, Officer Perder. Uh, that is going to talk with me about this topic. So welcome to the round table. Thank you for having me. Um, is something in your heart, the reason why you, you're sitting here, is something in your heart that you too feel needs to be done when it comes to relationship between the community and law enforcement? Right. Um, we can go back to the very beginnings of policing, and mm -hmm. we all know that there was never a strong tie between the community and police officers. And with uh, the way media is today, we really can still see that strong divide between. Now, when you say from the beginning, what beginning are you talking? From the beginning of law enforcement or from the, your beginning what you've observed? Uh, from the beginning of law enforcement in general. Okay. Take us back. You know, you, you go back, way, way back, uh, when policing was first started, it was about just you know, going out and catching escaped slaves. That's the, the originality of it. And so that, and you look through um, the 60s, the 70s, how um, police officers were in the streets with dogs, it was in the street with fire hoses, you know, just going after people. It was always, you saw a police officer and you kind of went the other way. Here it is, 2019, people still see police officers and they still want to go the other way. Not saying that you know, all officers are bad, but, the, but what the public sees is bad. So what, the origination of law enforcement police officers started off rounding up uh, runaway slaves. Correct. And so therefore you are saying from that time to this time, it has not appeared to evolve to what we want it to be, which is more of a, a protector of the community. It is still kind of viewed as one that people should fear because of their origination. Correct. Um it's not many times where you see police and community together. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, as an African-American male growing up, I've seen other people when they see police coming, it's always alert the next person. The police are around. It, and that's like saying, well, we need to stop doing what we're doing and fear right. that we may get in trouble. Right. And I actually agree with you. Um, because I'm a little bit older than you, not a lot. Okay, I'm a lot. Okay, um, but I remember as a young girl and not having a fear of the police, but we were taught basically that almost like we couldn't even be doing the good, right thing in their presence, that you had to somehow become uh, fake or uh, this superficial mm -hmm. person uh, so that they could not find anything or, 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 or deem you to be doing something wrong right. Right. even when you weren't doing anything wrong. Right. And so you're saying that that all goes back to our... The originality. 
the originality of, mm -hmm. of policing. Mm -hmm. And so you're part of, the, uh, of, of a team of officers, and you want to see that change. Correct. I, throughout my time in law enforcement, I worked in prisons, and I worked in the street as patrol officer. And as patrolman, I would get out my vehicle and just to go speak to people, and they always have that look on the face like, what did I do? I was just, before I got close enough, someone's like, hey, I just want to talk. You know, and it was always me trying to figure out what is it that I can do, because this is my neighborhood. Right. I want to know what is it that I can do that make you feel more comfortable with me and this department. What, so you, what, you had to get out the car waving the white flag, right, like right, uh, right. friends, not, Friend, not, not an enemy, enemy <laughs> so exactly. to speak. And, and how did that make you feel? There's a lot of tension. Mm -hmm. And then once the conversation gets started and they see, okay, well, he's not here to try to do anything to me, well, now I can kind of relax and I, I can freely speak to him. Mm -hmm. And so they see that uniform and we're all the same. It's just a uniform. Right. And poli when you, as a police officer, we're here to serve and protect the community. Right. And we can't do that if we have no relationship with the community. Right. And, and, and I will tell you, uh, one who was raised in a, a major city, that the police were always looked at as um, the family's fear factor, so to speak. Like, we didn't have a connection to them, so to speak. We didn't have, like, we didn't know a police officer. When I grew up personally, mm -hmm. I didn't know a police officer. And I think in the black community, that may be something else that, that uh, the black families are not familiar with because, you know, right. a long time ago, you know, right. black people weren't really police officers. Weren't welcomed as police right. officers. So in today's world, being a black officer, comes with a lot of uh, pushback from the black community. What are you doing with that uniform on? You know how we are seen in law enforcement eyes. How could you cross that line? Okay, now talk about that because I didn't know that. Well, first of all, I, one of the reasons I got into it was because of that in, mm -hmm. in a sense. When you look at police departments, you look at um, anything dealing with law enforcement, it's not very racial inclusive. Mm -hmm. So in order for things to change, the different races must get involved. I believe that law enforcement in every form should represent its community. Right. So <clears throat> when you're coming in as a black officer and you go into a black neighborhood, they look at you sideways already. So, but then me, the person that I am, like talk to people in that uniform, let them know, hey, this is why I'm wearing a uniform. Mm -hmm. I know you feel more comfortable with me than you with somebody else. So it's, you, you should want me to have this uniform on and understand that I'm gonna do things the correct way versus trying to use my power as an officer the wrong way. Right, so you're saying that because of the tensions between the black community and law enforcement, that you as a black man are not accepted by uh, your own as wearing a uniform because you represent what we fear in our community or may not necessarily um, have a, a confidence in. Right, majority of the time. Now I have ran into uh, African American females and male and they, they thank you. You know, they wave and say, I appreciate you, mm -hmm. what you do, but then you have those that you get those nasty looks from. And I know what that look mean. Right. You know. And so. they've had some type of probably history. Correct. Where there's been uh, some injustice that they feel has happened. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, you know, our opinions are formed based on past experiences, mm -hmm. whether it was us that experienced it, a mm -hmm. family member or a friend or something that they've seen. Right. And so, like I say, with uh, the media, with cell phones and cameras and everything, everything is put on social media. So it's more important that we just can't look at the citizens and say, well, y'all need to do X, Y, and Z. Us as officers need to really take a look at what we're doing and then 
we need to f find a way that okay, we gotta change what we're doing, and we have to make the public aware of why we do what we do and how we do it. Right. That way, they're more comfortable with the tactics that we use and understand why we're doing these things and how we came about to the decisions exactly right. why we're doing it. And another thing is not helping is now, like you said, social media, you know, because now they're policing the police. Mm -hmm. I, there's actually a little site that says that it, that's what they call themselves, right. policing the police. And they actually look for opportunities to be confrontational with the law mm -hmm. to prove their point that the police are out of control. But they are, to me, it puts a light that this is the mindset of all police officers when in actuality it's just like everything else. When you highlight only the bad, mm -hmm. we have a, a, a mindset to believe that this is everybody. Right. And so for you, you say what? It doesn't matter how many videos you see of an officer playing basketball with the neighborhood kids. The programs where officers are taking kids out for Christmas shopping. Right. Yeah, that one bad incident. And it, it gets rid of all the good stuff police are doing. Right. There's a lot of departments that have programs where they're trying to get involved with the community. Right. But when you still have those bad apples, they spoil the whole bunch. Right. So no matter how much good works we individually do, if we can't get rid of the bad apples, right. we're kind of spinning our wheels. And, and that's another catch-22 because like a lot of professions they kind of take care of their own mm -hmm. and so sometimes it's hard to get rid of the bad apple because th the bad apple is protected either by their race or well, maybe family member or some connection of uh, brotherhood or something mm -hmm. and so therefore they are given the opportunity to stay in place when you know they're not a good officer right um, I think um, one thing that's lacking is true uh, cultural diversity. Mm -hmm. There's actually, <clears throat> in the state of Georgia, you have to go through cultural diversity classes when you're a police officer. Oh, really? Now, it's a, it's a little class. It needs to be bigger? It needs to be bigger. A lot bigger? A lot bigger. Like, like, like? Um, it should be ongoing cultural diversity, cultural diversity training, and it should be a course, not an hour, two hour class right. where you can say, hey, I, I got this, it's on right. check mark. Because you can sit through that class, not even take a test, and you just sat through it and you got a check mark, yeah, I went through it. Or did you learn, did you actually pay attention? You know, Or even did you care? Did you care? So these, these are things that if, if they, we actually went through true cultural diversity mm -hmm. um, training, mm -hmm. when you went into a neighborhood that you're unfamiliar with, right. You went through that training, now you can kind of pick up on their mannerisms, why they speak it this way, why they why they stand this way, why do they view police this way, and what should you do when you find yourself in that situation? Too many times I've seen videos, or even <laughs> being on scene where people don't know how to interact with the people that are on scene because they have no idea of this cultural background. Right. Whether it's whites, blacks, Asians, Hispanics, if you've only been around your group of people and you've never really tried to understand anybody else, when somebody is in trouble and they're trying to convey this to you and you don't understand their background kind they're speaking to you, then as an officer, yeah. you it should look aggressive, it could look uh, harming, you know, like harm mm -hmm. is coming your way or something, or like right. you're not uh, adhering to what the officer is saying. It could, because I know mm -hmm. some people who speak with their hands, their language is just hands exactly. and a lot of loud talking. And that's the number one thing with police officers do not have your hands doing Everywhere. all this stuff. Well, you just knocked out a few cultures <laughs> because mm -hmm. that's exactly how they talk. Is right. with their hands exactly and so if you don't understand that it it looks like like you're not listening to what I say when I say don't don't do, but they're actually just that's and, a, that's and now you're getting aggressive now you're resisting because you all you're doing is trying to communicate with me how you communicate but your hands are I don't what are you doing with your hands and the, the most dangerous thing to a police officer is somebody's hands right and so with again that goes to that divide if the public doesn't understand 
that our main focus is hands and you want your hands to be still, but you talk with your hands. Right. So there's no understanding there. And I think that this is kind of the catch-22 when it comes down to officer and community because, you know, even sometimes officers feel more comfortable cuffing to prevent any possibilities mm -hmm. with the hands. Mm -hmm. And you're saying that if they get cuffed, it might not be anything other than, I just need to watch your hands. Mm -hmm. See, and there's no <clears throat> proper explanation. Um, sometimes you can tell people, hey, you just keep your hands still, they listen. Some people, they, it's natural for them to do all this stuff. And then you know, you know you're throwing handcuffs on them and then now they're upset. Right. I'm about to go to jail and I didn't do anything. Right, I'm just waving my hands. Right, and, but the officer, has, and he's thinking, well, I'll put putting these cuffs on them, I don't know what they're gonna do. So for, and they, people, officers love to say, for my safety and yours, I'm gonna go ahead and detain you. And if I've got your hands behind your back, when well, I'm no longer concerned about you, because the cuffs can always come off as easy as they went on. In certain situations, I can agree with that, but in other situations, like, there's other ways around it. Um, Outside of the cultural diversity training, there's also, um, it's called uh, de-escalation techniques. Right. A lot of times, you don't see that happening. Now, some of the departments are good about training de-escalation, de-escalation. Give me an example of that. When you go on scene, people are upset. Let's say it's a, three or four people, they're upset. Right. Their emotions are high, they're talking loud, they're yelling, they're cussing. You have to come on scene with a calm demeanor. Instead of matching what they are doing, you talk to them calm. You let them know, hey, let's bring it down. I've been on scene several times where individual will not calm down. I'm gonna leave if you cannot calm down and speak to me one on one. And then, okay, okay, okay. And then they'll go back up. I will, I'll turn around and walk, start walking to my car. Okay, I'm sorry. Sometimes you have to let people know that I'm in control of the situation. Right. Not you. I can't help you if all I hear is noise. Right. So if you keep your voice calm, if you use plain English and let and try to calm them down, that's a de-escalation technique. And then you separate people. If I got yeah. a group of four people, they're all hyped up, I can't keep all four of them together. It'll ne especially if they're mad at each other. Right. It'll because never it's just calm going down. to get and I think that that's something else that we don't in the community maybe understand. We don't understand the separating, causing that. And mm -hmm. it's a lot, because I know with me, you know, if someone came up on me and, you know, like an officer, I'm probably going to jail because you see me now, I got the hands everywhere. You ain't got your cuffs, do you? No. Okay. And but, if you notice, I'm watching your hands. <laughs> You're watching my hands. You know what it is. But, in this, but for me, this is normal. Mm -hmm. And 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 amongst my family and people who know me or people like me, this is very normal. Even in a heated situation between family members and friends, even in a in a disagreement, you might see hands moving, with no intention on mm -hmm. anything jumping anywhere. It's just how we are. And so, what do you think would be the best way? for officers to understand the difference between good movement and bad movement? More extensive training, because that is a part of the academy, learning about stances, hand placement, things of that nature. But again, it's quick. It's, it, you have to learn so much in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. It's so quick, but there needs to be more training. That's not, I'm, I'm highly trained. I got a lot of training, everything mm -hmm. I've done. And training never stops. Right. But for some officers, it does. They just do that yearly recertification training that, that uh, Georgia uh, says you have to do. Right. But the basics that we went through in Academy, the cultural diversity, the escalation techniques, mm -hmm. learning about the positioning with stance, hands, all that stuff should mm -hmm. continue. Right. Continue on. And th once you take those three classes right there, and you stand those classes out, and then you actually put people, those officers, while they're in training, in situations where 
they see it. They have to actually experience it. So when you take a rookie and you just dump him into a situation that he's never experienced before, what do you gonna think is going to happen? Right, it's going to be problems. And this is not, you and I are not talking about officers uh, or uh, communities where uh, we have troublemakers. See, I believe that on both sides we have troublemakers. Mm -hmm. We have community personnel who their, their stance against the, the uh, officers is nothing other than I'm a troublemaker. And then we have officers who are just a bad apple. They're, right. they, they are troublemakers. And, and I think if we get that in our heads, too, that, that one side is, really shouldn't outweigh the other side. And mm -hmm. I do understand police safety. I, I do understand that police officers put themselves in harm's way every day, going out trying to keep the peace and keep the community safe. I get that. Uh, but then I, I think this show, the best way of describing what we're saying is that we also want it for everyone, the mm -hmm. community and the police officers, that if we get an understanding, and, and like I said, we're not talking about the bad eggs, we're talking about people with, with, sense. with sense that really want the community and the relationship between uh, officers and the community to work, that it's got to be more than what we're doing. Right. It's literally impossible for me to do my job without the community. Right. So, Beth, it's you say separate the, the two. You have the officers that are here to do their job the right. proper way. You have the community who does not view policing as the that's the enemy. And you got your, you got your bad ass. They're going to be bad no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. But we as the community and policing, we have to come together as one because I'm going to stand on that line. When something bad is happening, I'm going to stand on that line and I'm going to protect you. Right. You know, I, I've, I've been doing it for years now, you know, and so, but I need for you to understand that I'm here to help. Now, things may look bad. Sometimes uh, the things that we have to do to get control of situations, it's like, well, why, well, why are they, why is there so many? Why are they doing this? Why? Everything that I've done, mm -hmm. it's like, um, you turn, your trainers kicks in. Situation happens and you react to it, and it's quick. And like, why did he body on the ground like that? Why is so many, right. you know? Certain, so, sometimes it gets to a point where it's like, I'm going to battle for my buddy. Right. I see somebody in that same uniform, he's struggling, I have to go and help. Because we are covered with weapons. Right. The last thing we want to happen is for that weapon to get into the wrong person's hand. And so that's why distance is important. Right. And hands and on. crowd control, because yes. you know, in some communities, something jump off. We have a tendency to crowd run to rush. the yes. to the scene yes. and crowd it, yes. and that puts the officer and everybody around there in danger. Because we right. don't know or haven't established who the enemy is or who the person is that may be causing trouble, if there is any trouble. Mm -hmm. But in I think. Maybe the community meet, needs to understand this. Um, not that we don't take a part in what may be happening, but we need to have enough distance, like you said, mm -hmm. for the officers to be able to get in and assess and look at the situation. And you can still witness it, but you don't have to be and right, right up on it right. in order to be a part of it. And I've, what I've, do you say to that? I've seen so many videos you have officers trying to make a simple arrest right. and crowds there's I, I i believe that things should be recorded by the public cell phones out i have no problem with it but when you have people in the background yelling fussing why are they being arrested this thing's first the officer only has to inform the person that's being arrested as to why they're being arrested there's crowds forming it's one officer maybe two officers and 10, 15, 20 people. That's fear. That would that's bring fear fearful. on me. It, exactly. Whether you're an officer or a regular person, anybody right. that's being crowded like that, so you're surrounded. All you're trying to do is affect an arrest. And so that's heightening the officer's the off yes. uh, fear. His, right. his, his, his mode is getting a little bit more stiff. And so he's mm -hmm. starting to think, I'm in trouble. Right. That fight or flight response kicks in. Right. 
Right. We are still human at the end of the day. That's right. All the emotions that you feel, I feel. Just because I have this body armor on, a gun that's hazy, does not turn me into a robot. Right. When you start crowding me and I can't back out of the crowds, I'm, I'm, I'm cornered. Something bad may happen. I don't want anything bad to happen, but me as one person, if you in, is a rowdy crowd, right. I may not be able to control this crowd. Now, when I worked in the prison system, it's different. Right. Trying to control a crowd of 50 people. Right. But in the streets, one person, it's very difficult to get control of that entire crowd and right. do your job safely. Right, and the officer feel confident enough to be able to do their job without mm -hmm. fear for their own life. And then we have the community who feels like now that if they don't witness it, that the officers, mm -hmm. because we got situations that were unjust, mm -hmm. we have, uh, but that's like in any profession, doctor, lawyer, uh, preacher, you know, Everything. officer, every, every job, every profession, you have the good and you have the bad. And with the community, you're, I think that they need to understand that both sides have a, 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 a point. Right. And that we all need to come to this happy medium of policing and allowing the police officers to do their job while we communicate to get on some level of agreement. What right. do you think about that? That's, that's why I wanted to bring up a, a forum. Come and talk to a police officer. Mm -hmm. and that police officer will be myself. Mm -hmm. The community can come out, questions and concerns. As I do my very best to bring knowledge. That way, when you leave that forum with better understanding, you'll be able to talk to your husband, your wife, your kids, family members, and hey, he's right. going to do this again. Right. So let's bring more people, have more questions, and if we do it again. I can bring other officers that I know and trust, and we can all bring you different officers' perspectives because each and every last officer, we all police differently. There's no set guideline as to how you have to do X, Y, see. and D, right, Z. Right, right. So I would love this and, and I would love to host it, uh, a forum of the community and law enforcement and to bring the, because this is the only way, round table kind of stuff, mm -hmm. the only way to get understanding is to come together and hear each other right. speak and hear each other's uh, concerns mm -hmm. and to uh, come to the table open mind to work out the differences. Mm -hmm. Ask the questions. Ask the questions mm -hmm. and break down the barriers to hear just a snippet of, uh, from Officer Perda uh, on what his desires and hopes would be is that we would be able to have communication and have conversation about community and law enforcement really being one community and not a divided community. It's not them against us or us against them. We are one. We are just uh, people trying to live the best life that we can live in one area of, uh, of land. So uh, we will get this information out to you at a later date as to when this forum will be, and we'll invite you to be a part of it. Until then, we'll see you next week.